we have Dr. Harris Makasaris. Big thanks for accepting our invitation today. Well, thank you for having me. So collaborators are really important factor. Yeah. Um, as well, another factor is the resource that you need for the project. Resource like time, people, yeah. space, equipment. Uh -huh. um, how do you plan the range of resources needed for uh, for the project? Yes, I mean this is this is now nitty gritty project planning, really. And uh, if you, being an expert in your area, you would know the kind of resource you would require. But the starting point is really the aim and objectives. Okay, so if you phrase the aim and objectives in, in, in a, the correct way, yeah, then you can work out obviously the project plan, and the project plan will drive the resource requirements. Now, there are some other considerations here, especially when you plan people's time, not necessarily your time, which you have to plan in, you have to cost in the proposal, but also the researchers you are going to hire. And you have to take into account the fact that. Uh, these people are going to come from, well, they will have probably just finished their PhD. They might have one or two years uh, postdoctoral experience, either in industry or in your own group or in another university. And working in a new research project, they have to understand the project so that there will be a period, uh, learn the techniques that you are familiar with or not familiar with, and you have to familiarize yourself as well. So th there is a ramp up period. Okay, so you, you have to you have to take that into account as well. Okay, so you have to factor it in and you have to cost it. Um, and another component is that ultimately, for the research assistant, research associate, whatever the, the, the pay grade is, there is a training element as well. Okay, so as I mentioned before what these funding schemes are trying to do, they're trying to create future leaders, right? You have to factor that in your proposal. So you hire somebody, why, why somebody would, would like to work in academia as a, as a research fellow, or research assistant? Because ultimately they want an academic career, okay? They want to build up their profiles because they want to enter academia. You have to factor that in and you have to make sure that you you do train them, you do bring them on board, you, you show them the ropes, okay? And that's an expectation uh, in, in, uh, in these projects, okay? Now, there is another category, and that, okay, most of the things I, I mentioned are for, for researchers who have some experience or lots of experience in raising um, um, research money, research funding. There are many schemes for early career researchers or ECRs, okay? All these networking activities I mentioned. And funding schemes by the research councils, they do, they, they, they are, uh, they do take into account, they, they do welcome actually ECRs, okay? Early career researchers. And there are application schemes, as I'm, I'm sure you are aware of, for early career researchers like the first grant scheme, okay? My advice is, if you have never applied before, that should be your number one priority, okay? So, understand what the scheme is about and apply. Or engage with networks, with others more experienced and try to take advantage of, of uh, the, the ACR schemes. There are targeted meetings for early career researchers by the research councils, by this kind of projects I mentioned. So keep your eyes open and try to find out when and where these meetings take place and participate, okay? Because, again, this is, this is in my experience, the only way to get the inroads into Research Council funding and the collaborations and uh, and all the rest of it. Okay. Yeah, you pointed out many points where are very very important. Like, thank you very much for this. Very very good. But is there anything that you would highlight aside all all of this and mainly with all of this? What does it make it successful? What is it? 
if I had an answer to that, <laughs> then <laughs> well, you know, you all the proposals <laughs> I have submitted would be successful, and unfortunately they are not. I mean, my, completely on top of my head, my success rate is more or less the national average, right, which is 20-25%. Oh. And of course that's, that's the average, mm -hmm. yeah, which means that you know, there are many people who actually are below, and of course many others who are above that, mm -hmm. right? And not all su proposals are successful. So there isn't a magic answer to that. And of course, success really depends on many other facts. So if you have done everything you possibly could and you have a stellar proposal by, by any standard, there is still a very, very high chance of not getting it funded, okay? Because of the, the way the panel has, has assessed the application on the day, or maybe because the other applications were so far better than yours, that yours was not but it just didn't make the funding line, okay? So there isn't a, a clear answer. So my, my advice would be do as much as you possibly can on your end, tick all the boxes, make sure you, you, you respond to the call. And of course, you have to be in the cutting edge of, of your area. Sometimes we, we do a project in our PhDs or, or in our postdocs and, and all that. And that's fine, but that's past tense, right? You have to look into the future. What is the cutting edge? What are the unanswered questions in your field? You, you must totally be up to date. That's one. And the second thing is, don't be afraid to work across disciplines. Okay, your PhD is right in the middle, or was right in the middle of an established research area. Somebody else has established. If you want to be a successful researcher, you have to push the boundaries, okay, and, and establish your own research, your own research agenda, and your own research area if you are lucky, right? How do you do that? You have to work with others. You have to work at the boundaries of, of disciplines, okay? So you have to be aware. So don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. That is essential. In fact, this is another key criterion that um, uh, research councils are looking for these days, because that's where invention, innovation and discovery is these days. It's not in the middle of traditional or existing research areas. It's at the boundaries. So work with or try to work with people who are well outside your research area. And Lorna, you know, you, you know I, have, I, have done, I have made the science out of it, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've been working with, with chemists, I have worked with social scientists, I have worked with uh, uh, biologists, biochemists, and so on and so forth. I do bring something specific yeah. in the mix, obviously, okay? But I try to push the boundaries, I try to work across uh, disciplines. So, you know, you, at the end of the day, you might respond to a call, tick all the boxes, but the idea might be so incremental, so traditional, so boring and important, you, you won't be successful. So it, the, the idea still plays a major role, okay? And you can only get great ideas for research by doing that, work across disciplines. But how difficult it is to, to talk it's very difficult. across disciplines? It's very difficult. And it's something that you can only develop over time, okay? And by working with others. Mm -hmm. needs needs a, a lot of work on your part, a lot of reading, a lot of research, uh, looking at, uh, try to, to, to have a much broader bird's eye view, if you like, of your own domain, as well as read an anything you can get your, your hands on, okay? Uh, that will inspire uh, ideas and, and uh, where to go. But again, I cannot stress enough how important it is to meet other people mm -hmm. from outside your own discipline, right? And, and that's, that is a very, very good source of, uh, of ideas. Mm. Okay. But it does require a lot of work. Mm. A lot of work is not easy, and it's something, and as you, you said, how do you develop the language? Yeah. Very important. Mm. And that is done only by reading, lots of it, <laughs> yes? Uh, so doing your homework and interacting with others, mm. okay? Go to presentations, talk to them, and of course they will be speaking their own language. You have to go back and 
try to understand what, what, what it is they said. What does this keyword mean? How, how maybe they use a term, but they mean exactly something that you, you really understand, but you call it differently in your own area. Okay? That happens very frequently. So you, you, you really have to, to understand. You have to build a vocabulary, really. Okay. And don't expect somebody else to do it for you. Okay. On that inspirational note, we'd like to say a big thank you to Dr. Harris Makasaris. And I think as we all heard, let's push the boundaries. Network, but network efficiently. And with that, we can do our best and let's see what happens. And I hope this is just the beginning of many more discussions to come on this very topic, both online and also within our various offices and communities. So thank you very much for watching us once again on Research Life and see you next time. Okay, thanks very much for having me. <laughs>